Hey guys, Bodhi here. Today we have Billy the Loan Scammer, again trying to get information from Elma, or Eileen, whoever. We also have a talk with Artist Chibi, who works for Medicare and has experience with these kinds of scams. Let's get into it. Can I speak with Miss Eileen? Uh, this is Eileen, yes, yeah. Hello. Hi ma'am, this is Billy oh, from Billy, Medicare Department. Billy, How yes, you doing? Billy, yes dear. How are you doing today? I'm doing really great, ma'am. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How was your day so far, ma'am? It was, uh, it was, uh, the, the morning was not very uh, good, but the the afternoon is starting to get better. <laughs> I hope you like you have a really great day. Yes, I no, had no, diarrhea this morning, you know. so it was not good. But it, it's starting to oh my uh, gosh. It's starting to uh, harden up a little bit now. Are you taking any medicines for that? No, no. But I think it was I, I took some milk of magnesia, and I think I took a little bit too much. When I when I get some heartburn, <laughs> I like to take a little bit of milk of magnesia, and if you take too much. <laughs> oh boy, you'll mm -hmm. poop yourself. You'll poop, 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 poop yourself all the time. Uh -huh. no, you, I have hope you, you ever taken milk now. of magnesia? Have no, you ever never. Have you ever, no? <clears throat> no, it's, uh, don't, don't take it unless you really need it. I only take it in extreme circumstances when I have bad heartburn. Uh, but uh, then, it's, you know, you'd, ra you'd rather have a soothing, uh, you know, soothe your heartburn than, than be able to hold your poop in, I think, sometimes. You know, I would rather be, I'd rather be sitting on the toilet than, you know, than uh, having a, a really bad uh -huh. heartburn, I guess. All right. But I almost like pooped myself. Like that was the thing. I almost pooped myself. Oh, my goodness. That's why it was a bad morning. I almost pooped myself. <laughs> well, you should better take well, a Well, I did, actually. I technically pooped myself, but I kept it from going on to my, my clothes. And I, 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 I quickly made it into the bathroom, and then, yeah, and then I got into the toilet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Right. Do they have coverage for anything right. for that? <laughs> Do you, do, do you sell well, coverage for that? Can you help my bowel well, we can help you. Well, we can help you to see a better doctor. Well, yes, I think that uh, I think that I should. That's going to help you, I think. <laughs> right. And ma'am, like, just like you mentioned before, you got Medicare Part A and B. Oh, yes, right? yeah. yeah. And right, the end, you got Medicare Advantage Plan. The Advantage Plan, yeah. Yeah. And you're living in Texas with zip code 75402. Right? Yeah, correct, yeah, correct. And gotcha. And ma'am, um, I, I still don't believe this. Like, you're 72 years old? <laughs> 72, yeah, 72. Uh, somebody, my called gosh, it, somebody called and said that I was 82. I said, no, my goodness. I said, did Billy tell you that? I said, did Billy tell you that I was 82? Because I told him I, told him I was 72, and he told me I sounded 52. So he's going to tell me that I sound 52, but then he's going to... Go and mock me down as 82? I said, oh, my lanta, I, I don't know about this bit of character. <laughs> right. So I hope right. it wasn't you, you that were telling but... anybody that I was 82. Did you accidentally put in the yeah. system I was 82? Maybe, like, he got a bad sight, or maybe, like, his eyesight was weak or something. Maybe, like, maybe yes, he yeah. He was, he was probably the one that was 82. <laughs> he can't <laughs> see it two, two right. feet in front of him. <laughs> right. Well, ma'am, really appreciate it, huh? Well, I just like told you before, like I will quickly get my license license agent on the line. Like he will provide you more information in details. Uh, let me tell you the reason of the call, ma'am. Like the, this call is about Medicare additional benefits with yeah. no cost to you. So, so please stay with me, ma'am. With the next 10 seconds, I will quickly get my license agent. Well, and right. ma'am, uh, like how do you pronounce your full name? It's Eileen. Mm -hmm. Last name Ulick. U L I C. No, ma'am. No, no, your real one. <laughs> Real one. <laughs> Eileen Ulick. <laughs> <laughs> no, ma'am. Real one. Not this one. Real one. What? You don't have it there? Uh, no, ma'am. I don't have the real name. Can you tell me your real name? Oh, my goodness. You don't have my name there? No, ma'am. I don't. Can you tell me your real name? It's Eileen Carpenter. Carpenter? Yes. Okay. How do you spell your last name? C-A-R-P-E-N-T-E-R. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Really lovely talking with you, Mel. So, Mel, I'm just done here. Like, one last thing. Like, you are the decision maker of yourself. You can make your own healthcare decisions, right? No, that's Jesus, dear. That's up to Jesus. <laughs> All right, but I'm talking about your healthcare decisions, Mel. Can you make uh, your healthcare uh, decisions? I'd leave it all up to Jesus. Okay. You know that you know all that right, you know so that, like, uh, that that song Jesus Take the Wheel. You ever hear that song? Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful song, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Do you know the story behind that? It was a car accident. You understand? 
Do you, do, you, do, you, do, you remember, do you remember that song? Oh, my goodness. It brings tears just thinking about it. Oh, Jesus, take the wheel. So, I'm like, uh, let, me, uh, say, uh, let me tell you like this. Like, if you find something beneficial for yourself, if you think it, uh, good for you, it, if it's good for you, uh, would you like to consider it switching? Would I consider it bitching? What? Uh, switching to another insurance. Uh, if you find something beneficial for yourself. If something's better and, like, less money, you mean? Yeah. Well, yeah. With more coverage, oh, right? Got you, right? So, so that was I was asking that. So, my mom just done here. So, please stay with me. For the next ten seconds, my specialist will be on the line. All right. right. And how's your nephew, Mel? Oh, he's great. He's great. He's up there taking care of the uh, the chicken. Uh, he's visiting you nowadays. I got I got a whole bunch of chickens. You see, I got uh, I got mm-hmm. about uh, three hundred uh, chickens, and I got about uh, ten roosters. So, those some busy roosters. <laughs> Oh, you're having a really busy day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got 10 roosters, 300 chickens, you got <laughs> them roosters, you gotta, <laughs> they got a lot of work. <laughs> but, but no, no, they, I don't let them fuck them all because then I wouldn't get some any good uh, good eggs, right? So you can't let the roosters uh, get in with the, with the chickens or you end up uh, with bad eggs. Well, not this bad eggs. This call may be recorded. They're good right, eggs, so but they're go. just not eggs. Good. Thank you for calling they're just not. Your Medicare they're just. Calls may be recorded oh. for quality assurance. Mm-hmm. Right here we go now. My, my specialist will be on the line for the next ten seconds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here the, we go. The, the eggs are not uh, not bad, but uh, that just means that they that they've been uh, fertilized, so that they come out to actually be chickens and not uh, eggs that you would want to eat at breakfast. <laughs> Do you have Medicare Part so if you handy? if you let the if you let the roosters in with the chickens, they fuck them all, and then you get all kinds of bad eggs. Hello, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. My specialist was here, and she just hung up because you were talking burger. My I was what? You were, ma'am. My specialist was here, and she just hung up. Uh, like you were talking about something bad or something. Was I? Oh my goodness! She just hang Did up. I, um, I'm. Oh no, I'm sorry, dear. Um, oh no, I, I was. Uh, I thought we were on hold. Uh, well, oh, I let, let it slip out sometimes. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Let me try again, Mel. All right. All right. Let me try again. Please, David. This you know. call may be recorded. Oh, here we go now. Yes, sir. Right. Thank you for calling to review your Medicare options. Calls mm-hmm. may be recorded for quality sometimes assurance. Sometimes when I get into right. talking about the chickens, you know, it's. A, and then, uh, then I don't really hear if somebody's if somebody's on the phone or not. Sorry, what was that? Please stay with me. Oh, uh, I'm I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, Jesse's outside uh, tending the chickens. You currently have Medicare Parts A and B. Hello, hello. Hi. Who's this? Yes. Who's this? Hi, this is Key Asia on a recorded line. Do you currently have Medicare Parts A and B? Key Asia. Yes, yes, I, I do. Hey, artist. So. I wanted to have a little talk with you to help explain some things. As you know, I'm Canadian, so U.S. health insurance is totally unknown to me. Here we have health cards, and that's all you have to give to a health care provider. So the fraud is very limited. I think the largest fraud in our system would probably be doctors filling out fraudulent claims. So the whole system in the U.S. is foreign to me. But I certainly can see how it can be exploited by a much larger group of people. Most, uh, most definitely. So, we hear the scammer from the last episode wanting to know if Eileen had part A and B. How is this significant to their scam? Does the victim need to have this coverage to exploit them? Yes, actually they do, because um, in order to exploit uh, the medical claims, they have to have part B. Uh, Without part B, they really can't exploit anything because hospital part A, completely just hospital. And they could also drag more information out of them, uh, like such as where they're located, before they switch them over to a licensed agent to sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan. Okay, so the Part B gives the scammer the ability to make the claims on the policy. Who is liable for those fraudulent claims? Uh, That would actually be whoever decides to submit the claim to Medicare. Because of the fact that we keep records of who is enrolled under Medicare, so if a supplier decides, well, they're ordering this item, and it's a large amount of it, and it costs thousands of dollars, Uh, What they do, they submit the claim to us. Now, if they are knowing about the fraudulent claim and they're refusing to remove the claim, they lose their contract under Medicare and be reported to the federal police. Whereas if they didn't know, they will remove the claim and then they lose the money out of that too. Now, as I said, in Canada, all you need to do anything is provide a health care number. 
which every citizen is eligible for. I feel safe giving it out freely to a healthcare provider, but wouldn't give it out to an unsolicited call regardless. And in my province, it's actually against legislation to collect that information unless you are a custodian or authorized to do so under the regulations, like a licensed healthcare practitioner. In the previous clips, the scammer asked for the Medicare number. Is it legal for this third party to ask for that kind of information? Uh, yes. Um, if they're a licensed sales agent that sells like uh, Medicare Advantage plans, or if they work for the state health insurance assistance program under Medicare, they are allowed to ask for it, even if they're not a doctor or a nurse or even a hospital. Yeah, it didn't sound like these guys were licensed at all. The agents that Billy ends up sending me to was most likely a licensed sales agent. They were select quote senior. Have you heard of them? Um, I've heard a few beneficiaries tell me about this uh, company before, and I've actually looked them up before. They're not exactly rated the best in terms of proper insurance, and they do more than just health insurance because they also do a car and life and other things, and too many people complain about them. It's usually better to just call Medicare directly. Now, what happens to someone's information if they do give the scammer their Medicare plan number? Um, they would have, a, with the Medicare number, they would have the ability to make fraudulent claims, such as uh, medical claims for like a doctor's visit or something. I've made like numerous transfers to our claims representatives because of this there has always been this one doctor that popped up in like five different beneficiary accounts for the same thing and they don't know who they are they're on the other side of the u.s so and they get money from this too so a person could buy this information from a scammer and make claims to benefit themselves without the need to purchase health insurance Yes, and then they can also move on to other scams because they can start pulling more information out of the beneficiary if they claim they're from an official government agency. The scammer also tries to get me to agree to this recording. It's just for a compliance and your awareness purpose. Here we go. Okay. Before we proceed, I need your electronic voice signature that is the same as giving us your written consent to receive marketing communication by us or our partners via automated dialing system that will override all federal or state telemarketing and do not call laws. Your consent is not required as a condition to purchase any products and services including Medicare supplement, Medicare Advantage, and prescription drug plans. Your consent can be revoked through any reasonable means. Please say yes if you agree. Nah. No? What, sorry? I mean, you have to say uh, yes or no at the end. Uh, what does this mean and how is it relevant? All right. Uh, this is something that we were actually told about when I first uh, started working for Medicare. Uh, what they do is they use the recorded me message that requests for them to say yes. If they say yes, they could use that to agree to credit card, loan, a dozen other things. They become a victim of identity theft. So the scammers are branching out with this scam, going for the full identity theft. Wow. Yes, that's yeah. exactly right. And I'm sure there are bank accounts out there that you can open up online with this information. Yes. Now, do you get a lot of reports about these scams? Uh, yes. On a good day, I get like one or two. But for the most part, it's usually four to five reports a week. If it's really bad, about 10 to 13. Now, what is the most common scam that you're seeing? Um, a lot of them are saying, well, this person sounds foreign, they sound like they're in a call center, uh, they are claiming to be from Medicare, uh, ask it, asking me if I got my new Medicare card, it's made of plastic, or it's black and white, or gold, or with a chip in it, or something like that. And then they move on to asking health questions, their doctor's names, their height, their weight, and that's where the durable medical equipment stuff comes in. So the scammers are using the information to fraudulently claim equipment? Um, no, they literally will send them medical equipment, back braces, knee braces, after getting that personal information, because that that's where the that's where it begins. They start out with the Medicare Advantage fraud, and then they move on to the DME because they pull more information out of the beneficiary because some of them don't even have their current card. They have the ones with their social security number on it, which we stopped using in 2018 because they could probably sell that same information to other scams and which can lead to even more problems and identity theft and it's the whole chain reaction. Well, this scam is very complex and like other scams, I'm sure it keeps evolving to find more ways to scam money from the system 
and inevitably us. It seems the best solution to this is to make sure you are talking to the real Medicare and do not take unsolicited calls. Thank you, Artis, for your insights. It's very appreciated. And my pleasure to be of assistance. Yeah. Oh, good how to how know, are you? I'm doing great, Mom. I'm having a really great day. Thanks That's for good. asking, Dal. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I'm just calling, ma'am, like, let's, like, just to know, like, uh, did you got your benefits? Like, yesterday I connected you to the license agent? Uh, yes, yeah, yes. And what happened? Uh, they went through some stuff and everything was okay. And did you got something from them? N- no, no. Uh, like, uh, in the end, what they say? Like, uh, that you are all covered or something? Like, in the end, what did they say? What did uh, they they asked me if I end? wanted it, and I said I did. You did? I didn't, no. No, you didn't get some benefits? No, no. All right. All right. Thanks for your time, though, Mel. Okay. I really All appreciate right. that. Okay. All right. Bye Have now. a great day, Mel. You Bye. Too. Bye, Billy. Take Bye. care. Well, there it is, folks. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the like button, comment down below, and subscribe if you have not already. Then hit the bell and share. And until the next one, vote out. You have been invaded by Oda.